We will continue our media availability here at Richmond International Raceway with Mr. Brad Keselowski, who is driving the number two Reds Apple Ale Ford Fusion this weekend, who brought along some uh, props for us today here in the media center. Uh, Brad, currently third in points. Talk a little bit about this weekend, your sponsor and your props up here. Sure. How are Tell you, us Christy? a little. I'm good, Brad. How are good. you? I'm great. Um, well, y'all look like you've had an exciting day, so I figured you could use something to help out. But uh, no, we got uh, a lot of great things going on. Obviously, a good start for us this year, and I know you guys got a lot of things going on too. But um, doing some different things, obviously with motor cores branching out and doing the Reds car this weekend, and something kind of new and different. You know, I like things new and different. So a um, little switch of pace uh, for this weekend and. Certainly not every weekend, but this weekend, maybe a few others. But, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, ready for Richmond. And I uh, got the nationwide car here, cup car. And I think that I've even got a car entered in the K&N race. And uh, all I need is a car in the late mile race. We'd have them all covered. But um, hopefully we can come away with some victories. We've been really close in uh, all the series this year. And I feel like I've got uh, a bunch of second-place finishes. And I'm trying to get that one extra spot and get some wins. Uh you know, the way this sport's set up, especially with the, the chase on the cup side, uh, wins are really what matters uh, for, for qualifying for the chase and seeding and, and whatnot. And we've been close, but, uh, you know, kind of no cigar. Uh, and hopefully we can uh, get that done here in Richmond. All right, we'll open it up for questions for Brad. We'll start up front with Jeff. Um, Jeff Clark from USA Today. Um, it seems like there's been a lot of big penalties going on NASCAR lately. I'm, I'm not sure if you've noticed. <laughs> um, you know, is that a sign of something that, that's turning into a trend? Is NASCAR suddenly cracking down, or, or is it just coincidence? Um, I'm sure you saw the, the Hamlin penalties. Were you, or I'm sorry, the Kansas penalties. Were you, were you surprised at all about the, uh, the severity of that one? Yeah, I'm. I mean, I think there's there's no doubt that there's been a, a pretty significant uh, ratcheting effect to the penalties in the sport. Um, it, it takes a lot to really surprise me nowadays, whether it was the penalty that we received uh, the past week or the one that happened to um, the Gibbs group. You know, I, I kind of... I, I understand both sides in, in a sense, but then, again, I, again, I don't... Um, I think it's really tough. What, what the sport really lacks right now is a way for us to uh, curb fair play, you know, balance the, the fair play that the sport needs so that our fans can really relate to it without present, uh, presenting this, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't want to call it illusion, but presenting this almost like facade as though there's, there's cheating in the sport. And uh, I, I think it's pretty obvious that when you look at Matt's issue that, you know, the pieces and the parts were not that influential to the performance and um, probably didn't win him the race. I think anyone could probably say that. But then again, from NASCAR side, they, they know that if you give an inch, you got to give a mile. Uh, so, you know, it's basically what we, we lack in the sport is some kind of proportionate response. To, to, to manage that uh, and I think that's really what you're seeing you know it's it's a it's a pretty significant penalty I think there's probably other ways to take control of the situation uh, but then again I don't know all the circumstances uh, more times than not there's usually a, a series of events that lead up to such an instance um, and that might have been the case that, and those series of events are usually behind closed doors uh, but then obviously this situation is not behind closed doors so you know it, it's difficult uh, because I don't think any of us probably know the full circumstances and there's a strong chance we probably never will and from my experience there's usually a lot more than what you can see um, but then again I, I feel like I feel like we need something in our sport similar to what the NBA or the NFL has where you know, we have fouls or, uh, you know, NFL has yardage penalties or whatever. We need something like that in our sport, you know, uh, something to control people from getting too far out, but without sending this large message that I think we send when we have issues like this that 
uh, make people kind of question the competitors and where they're at. I know I personally don't enjoy um, answering the questions from fans and the scenarios that we've been presented over the last few weeks about, well, does this mean you're a cheater, da 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 I, I don't think that's fair because, you know, you look at the best players, let's say in the NBA, Michael Jordan committed fouls, and you don't see situations where the fans in the NBA look at him and call him a cheater. Um, it's just kind of part of the game where you're when you're pushing to the limit, sometimes things just step over, whether it's intentional or not. It sounds like that's what happened with Matt. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have a system to uh, really keep that in check without it becoming almost a death penalty situation. Um, and those penalties are severe enough where you could certainly put them in that case. Okay, we'll take our next question from the back. Hey, Brad, Mark Davis, NBC 12 here in Richmond. Um, everybody has their home tracks they grew up around. Uh, Denny's is here. Can you guys sympathize with him a little bit just to the fact that he can't race in front of his home fans? And then also, do you remember an instance in your own career where kind of a similar thing might have happened to you? Uh, well, you know, racing at your home track, it, I think Carl Edwards said a few weeks back, or I guess it would have been last week at Kansas, that winning at Kansas would be the same to him as winning the Daytona 500. I think that's how a lot of drivers feel about their local track. Uh, it means the world to you to win close to home because that's all your friends and family and so forth. And although it might not get the same notoriety as the Daytona 500 with the media and so forth, in your own inner circle, uh, your personal friends, your family, etc., um, it does mean the world. And so it, it hurts when you don't have that opportunity for sure. Uh, and, I, yeah, I can absolutely sympathize for him. I know what it feels like. I finished second at Michigan last fall, and uh, that was one of the most heartbreaking things in the whole world because you knew you were that close to being able to celebrate with your friends and family. And uh, I was fortunate enough to, to win a few nationwide races at my home track in Michigan, and uh, those were some of the biggest days in, in my life. So uh, I know exactly how he feels not having that opportunity but then again he has been fortunate enough to win here in the past uh so you know it's not like he's never had uh, any success here so uh you know with there's good times and bad and certainly he's going through some uh, difficult times and uh whether you're a fan or his or not uh you, you have to wish him the best uh, and i do uh, because our sport needs him uh, it needs it needs our best drivers what makes racing so special compared to other sports, uh, you know, I, I went back, I just used an analogy earlier about the, the fine stuff and things that, you know, maybe we don't do quite as well as other sports. Well, there's some things that we do better in other sports, and that is every weekend you're going to see the best players in our sport at the racetrack. Uh, and that's one of the things that we have to offer in NASCAR. Uh, and when someone gets hurt, uh, it's, it's fortunately been very rare over the last decade but when someone gets hurt we, we lose that little bit of mustard and, and we need that okay questions for brad raise your hand we'll get a wireless mic to you okay we'll take one from stan then we'll go to the back with lane stan creekmore with rpm tonight.com brad talk about the difference between racing tonight and and racing saturday is, is it so much is it a lot more relaxing to, to run something like tonight? Well, I'm not racing tonight, but um, I'll, I'm definitely watching. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, absolutely, it's a lot more relaxing because, you know, it's 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 got that rootsy feel where, you know, I think most drivers at, at this level uh, grew up in some kind of late model, or not all of them, certainly, but a, a good portion of them. And uh, being able to, um, to race... Uh, and reconnect with those roots is it's like going home and seeing your your old family dog you know it's that same kind of feeling you just you just smile and enjoy it um and, and it you know it, it's almost like a recollection of your past more than anything else and i think you just appreciate it okay we'll take one in the back from lane then come up to hank brad uh in talking with people that have been through an appeals process before what's your what are you hoping to see next week, and how optimistic are you that something might be changed even though the track record isn't great? Well, I, I personally won't be sitting in it, so I, I don't know exactly how the appeal goes, and I haven't really asked that much uh, question-wise as far as how it works. So, um, you know, my hopes are obviously that it gets 100% repealed. You know, that's that's my hopes. Um, but realistically, I, I would say that's probably not going to happen. So, uh, you know, I, I just... 
I'm just going to stand by and watch and, and let Roger and uh, his guys figure it out. Uh, that's what they're good at. And I'm good at driving the car. They're good at those situations. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to let Roger do what he does and uh, hope for the best. Okay, we'll take a question here from Hank up front. Hank Kurz with AP. What do you think drivers, as a as a rule, how they they feel about what what happened to Matt? I mean, you know, apparently the engine part that was faulty or was too light was something you know that they never touched. Um, I think an objective driver who has experience in the sport that really understands what's going on uh, is probably going to feel bad for him uh, and feel like he probably didn't deserve what he got. Certainly there's going to be those that aren't objective. <laughs> uh, but I can tell you that if he had, or if I had what he had last weekend, I wouldn't have finished any better. Uh, and that's just looking at it objectively. I think there's probably some drivers that won't tote that line because they don't want to put their name out there and, you know, uh, make it look like they're disagreeing with the call. But um, I, I think anyone in an objective close setting would, would probably tell you that at this level. And, certainly feel bad for him because uh, at the end of the day, Matt doesn't put together the car, and heck, in this particular situation, his team didn't even put together the engine. Um, so it's, it's a difficult situation at best, but um, you know, and again, in, in the offense of NASCAR side, there's um, there's got to be a line in the sand somewhere, and you know, obviously they, they went over the line in the sand, and you know, then it's just a question of whether the penalty fits the crime. Okay, we'll take our final question right here in the middle. Hey, Charlie Leff of Richmond Sport, Suburban Newspapers. Uh, it wasn't too long ago you were considered one of the young guys out here. You look at the race tonight, you got a couple, you know, 15, 16 year olds. Yeah. Does that start to make you feel old? Yeah, it doesn't make me feel younger. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, you know, I, I feel like um, looking at the, the history I had in the sport, uh, growing up in it and so forth. I feel like I was really fortunate where at their age I didn't feel that way. Uh, you know, I didn't get my first opportunity to really drive a, a stock car till I was, you know, dang near 17 years old. And that was a, a local track, I guess you would call it a, a factory stock. Uh, and I didn't get a chance to do anything in NASCAR till uh, I was 21, 22 years old, something like that. Uh, and so those situations, you know, those three or four years, even though I didn't think it then, uh, really helped me to mature and understand the situation and, and the hard work that was put into the cars and, and really respect uh, that part of it. So, you know, in a way, I look at them and feel bad. Like, hey, I, I wish you could uh, just wait a, for a few more years before you get in this situation because now you're in the spotlight. And when you make mistakes in the spotlight, you don't usually get a second chance. So um, it's interesting. Every once in a while you see one of these really young guys like a Logano or Larson go out there and just, uh, you know, knock the cover off the ball, but not usually. And so uh, I end up feeling bad for him more than anything else because if you screw up at these levels, like I screwed up at that age, uh, at a different level, but if you screw up at these levels, you usually don't get a second chance. So, uh, you know, I end up feeling bad for him more than anything else. All right. At this time, uh, I understand we have a special guest we'd like to bring to the stage with us now, certainly a friend of the NASCAR community, Sam Bass, if you'd like to join Brad on stage. Hey, Sam, how are you? Good, man. What you got here, bud? Thank you. I'm going to grab your mic, Brad. This is, uh... <laughs> here. I'll grab you. Yeah. that right there. All right. Uh, I brought you, brought you a gift. Um, I like gifts. <laughs> uh, you know I think the world of you. And uh, I, I got my start 32 years ago in this media center, hung my first painting. And uh, when you won the chance. <laughs> no, they've, they've been replaced over the years. But uh, I, uh, I, I did this um, championship commemorative for you. And uh, I told the folks at Miller I was working on it for you to give it to you, and they ended up turning it into a national promotion, uh, much to my surprise. But I did want to get the original to you, and, uh, and congratulations on your championship, and I hope you will enjoy this. Thank you. I appreciate it, Sam. Well, thank you, Sam. Sam does, uh, he's been in the garage for a long time, does great work, and um, I really appreciate it, bud. Thank you. I hope to see you around for years to come. You've done a lot for our sport. Thanks.